If you will look at me and listen to me. The Bible says these are the most dangerous things when men love themselves and love money. Then the Bible says fake Christians are the next threat. The Bible said that there will be many that claim the name of Christ. But if you look on social media, they say, I don't really believe the Bible is the word of God, but I believe I'm a Christian. How are you any different than someone who decides their gender based on how they feel? You're no different. And furthermore, and I hope you'll listen very carefully to this part. There is a reason that Christians are being counterfeited so much in America. Because the devil wants the church to be drowsy when the government comes to close them down. It is the true Christian. Look me in the eye. It is the true Christian that knows what's going on. It is the true Christian that understands what's happening. Now, I'm going to ask you to understand that you don't have a map to the future. Politicians do not have a map to the future. And what Paul is saying is things are going to get dangerous in the last days because evil will be called good and good will be called evil. And male will be called female and female will be called male. And up will be down and down will be up and dark will be light and light will be dark until finally it all blurs. But the Bible says, the Bible says that in these same days of darkness, division, and hatred, that an army of light would form. How many of you believe that? You need to wake up and listen to what I'm going to tell you right now. You know, you believe something that you need to understand is going on with your life. What's going on with your life is that the enemy, an invisible enemy of your soul, has told you that you're the one, you're going to be the first successful drug addict. You're the one that heroin isn't going to kill. You're the one that crack isn't going to remove your teeth and your sanity. You're the individual that's different than anyone else. When the Bible says that they would, their mind would be twisted, their emotions would be broken, it's talking about the day in which you're the pimp that's going to get away with it. You're the drug lord that finally, even though the statistics prove that a gangbanger in L.A. lives to be 20 years old, those stats mean nothing to you. 400 John Doe's and John Danes, uh, Jane Doe's that live in the morgue in L.A. mean nothing to you. These are the results that Satan hides. He hides it. He wants you to believe. The Bible says headstrong, meaning I believe I'm right. I believe I'm right. I believe I can pimp, I can steal, I can rob, I can lie, I can love myself, and I can do this. And you won't even look at the outcome. You won't see it. But here's what I want you to understand. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, he died for the force that is destroying you. He died for what you are hurting from. He died to pay the price for your separation from God and what humanity has done. Now, I want to add one more thing. You cannot give Jesus a tip. You don't give him scraps. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. You give him all. 
you surrender all. You surrender all. When you lay yourself at the altar of God, you say, Christ, you are now the force of my life. You are now the power of my choices. You are now the reason for my life. There's too much dependency on the church today on music. There is not enough of a direct explanation to the public of what is at stake, what is wrong, and what a life needs to do. Now look at me. Satan is real. Hell is real. The Bible is correct when it says that there is a day coming when all of the list of things that I've described, you will stand before God. Everyone alone will stand before God. You will stand before God. And your education will not exempt you from that appointment. You will not be able to use self-pity as a reason to not meet God on the judgment day. There will never be and cannot be a license. This, my billionaire Silicon Valley mogul, you cannot buy your way out of. You will stand before God. And you will give an answer. But what will I have to answer for? On that day when I stand before God, what will I have to answer for? Rejecting the gospel of Christ. There is no other pure definition of sin than when someone has died for you, given their life, laid down their life for you. And in exchange for that, you said, no, I want to live my own way. And then you were in misery. Because one thing that you get to do is choose what you do. But you do not get to choose the result of that choice. That's why the Bible says the times will be dangerous because of what men have become. Now, I'm going to stop. This message is brief because I've got another one. And I've got something that I want to do. I'm going to look at you right now. There is a love that you have never known and a peace you have never known. It is impossible to put it into words. It must be experienced. And so what Christ said, he said, come to me. That's why I'm going to call you out of your seat to Christ. I'm going to ask you directly and definitively to give your life to Christ. Now, I want you to understand what that entails. It means the end of Satan's control of you. It's literally that you are going to be purchased. You're going to be bought to God by the death on the cross. Do you realize that the miracle of what happened on the cross is so great that you can't put words into it? The power that was expressed and the goodness that came out of the cross, you can't put it into words. It must be experienced. You must obey God and experience it. Now, you're going to find, when you close your eyes in about two minutes, when you close your eyes, that something supernatural is going to begin happening to you. You're going to believe that alcohol will never be a problem to you again. You're going to believe that pills and drugs and injections will never be a problem to you anymore. You will literally become aware of your power over heroin and you'll no longer be able to imagine yourself a heroin addict any more than you could imagine Christ as a heroin addict. You will leave the life. You will leave the abusive relationship. You will find power. But Mara, I need to go home and think about it. There is nothing to think about. There is nothing to think about. So I'd like every one of you to bow your heads. Everyone in this region, everyone under the sound of my voice, 
I appreciate all of the revivalists who are excited, but we're going to get very sober for a few minutes. There is no time like that time when you decide where you're going to spend eternity. Everyone here is going to die. Everyone here will stand before God. It is a, not enough for Satan to put you in hell. He must make you suffer on the journey to hell. He wants to give you hell to go to hell on. The Bible says that Jesus is just the opposite. That when you are saved, you actually get a piece of heaven put inside of you. In other words, the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more until that perfect day. A better way of saying it is like the way the sun comes up in the morning. It's dark. It's first daybreak. And then suddenly it dominates everything. That's what Christ will do in you. Today, we'll begin with the decision. It will grow into a full day of righteousness. But here's the point. Every day, God will give you power to understand his word. Every day, God will give you direction for your life. This is when you realize that you're going to get to marry the right person, choose the correct career, avoid evil, sleep at night, and have clarity because you have connected to what you were born to be. Now, God gives you heaven to go to heaven on. He gives you heaven to go to heaven on. There's nothing to think about. Do you want hell to go to hell on or do you want heaven to go to heaven on? It's a very simple choice. But it does require surrender. It requires admitting that you have sinned before God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. If you're Catholic like I was raised, I don't have to go to a priest to get forgiveness. I don't have to buy forgiveness. It was paid for once and for all. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity that is so powerful and so rare and unusual that I just want to take a moment to describe it. I want you to let me pray for you. Let me pray for you that drugs will no longer have power over you, that your anger and your forgiveness and anything, any drive, any, any emotion that is destructive will be healed by the power of God. What do you want me to do, Mara? I want you to let me pray for you. As far as people are out, as far as I can see, they're out in the parking lot standing listening. I'm going to ask you to let me pray for you. And when I do, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You and I are going to agree. And the Bible says that's powerful. If any two of you shall agree as touching anything on earth, it will be done. And I agree that today is the day you sleep through the night. Today is the day that you begin to forgive those who have hurt you. Today is the day that you begin to know that you know that you know that you're going to heaven. With nobody looking, I'd like you to say, by the upraised hand, Mario, pray for me. I need Jesus to change my life. I need Jesus to change my life. Let me see your hands. Put your hands up wherever you are. All are out there. I'm waiting on people that know that they need this more than they need the next breath. I need this, Mario. I need it, and I need it now. Put your hand in the air so we can agree in prayer. Now, if your hand is in the air, stand to your feet, wherever you are. Get up on your feet. Get up on your feet. And now,
Let's reverence people being saved, please. I want all of you that are standing to get out of your seat, to come to the nearest aisle and walk to the front and receive the greatest miracle of your life. Come now from all over this. Come from the back. Come from wherever you are. Come. Fill the front. Workers, I need all of you to help me right now to make sure people come to the front. Ushers and workers, get up here. Pull the people up against the stage. Fill in right over here. Fill in right over there. Fill in around to the sides. Keep coming. Keep coming. The line is all the way to the back of the tent. How many of you are watching a miracle right now? A miracle. Keep coming, keep filling in as best you can. I need the workers to be in the front pulling people towards you so that, yes, don't be shy about it. Yeah. All right. This line is still full all the way to the back. You can see it. Now, no man is to receive glory or honor for what you're seeing right now. This is not the work of Mario Murillo. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. This is the answer to prayer. I'm going to ask you to stand right where you are now. Look me in the eye, all of you that have come forward. I am not desirous of a number of people to come forward. My passion is for you to become a permanent disciple of Jesus. I don't my thrill, my thrill today is not that we have this wonderful photo op. My thrill is going to be when I see you with me in heaven. That's my thrill. I want you to cross the finish line. I want you to make it all the way to heaven. So look, look me in the eye. The Bible says that some seed fell on good ground. Some seed fell on hard ground. Some seed, it fell by the wayside and birds ate it. And some, it said that the weeds grew up and choked it. If you do not understand conversion, that word, transformation, if you don't have a grip on the fact that today you are receiving Jesus for your life. This is a life choice forever. This is it. No going back. No person can come before Christ to you. No drug, no pleasure, nothing. Christ must be number one. Without that, I cannot promise you that anything good will come of this prayer. But if you mean it, from your heart that you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, then I'm going to tell you something. You are about to make the best decision of your whole life. Of your whole life. Now, put your hand over your heart. The Bible says that we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I see you dying for me on the cross. You gave up everything. You suffered a horrible death. 
for me. For me. I, know I know by your death on the cross, on the cross. That, you loved me. that you loved me. You proved it. On the third day, you rose from the dead. And that proves that you have the power to change me, to take away my addictions, anything that is evil in me, and make me your child. Now I want you to know, Lord, that I mean it that I'm surrendering, that I'm giving up everything, that I might know Jesus and know that I'm going to heaven. This is the hour for me to serve you. From now on, I am yours. Now everybody hold your applause. We are going to get a limited amount of information from you. Say, why are you doing that? To harass us? To raise money? Never. It is to prove that we care about what happens to you and your family and your future. Mario Murillo Ministries has come to Modesto with a network of very loving and powerful churches. And we're going to make sure that you have follow-up. Let me tell you what follow-up is. Follow-up means that we didn't just pray with you, that we didn't just pray for you, but after that, we did whatever we could to make sure that your life in Jesus took off. So we want to put you into the fast lane of growing in Christ. To do that, we'll need a few minutes of your time and we're going to try to fit all of you somewhere for our workers, and there are hundreds of them, to pray for you. So where am I going? They're all waiting. They're all waiting. There's an a, a absolute loving core over there waiting for you. I'd like, hold your applause. I'd like all of you to turn this way, face this way. Anybody that's in the way is going to get trampled, so... You need to follow them and head out, and we're going to let you go right now. Let's head out there now. Every one of you go. In the front of the line, you need to move the quickest. Now, welcome your new brothers and sisters into the family. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Give God the glory. No man, no man, only Christ. Boy, you can't be done clapping that fast. Come on, shout to the Lord. This is amazing. Lord, Look at them. I, I'm sorry, but I got to clap a little bit longer. I got to give God the glory just a little bit more. I mean, if you look over there, that, that line of humanity being saved from the hand of the devil, being saved from going to hell, being transformed and made alive by the Lord Jesus Christ in the state of California. No social distancing and no fear. This is wall to wall, Holy Ghost fire.
How many of you love it that it's taking so long to get all of the harvest in? Thank you.